According to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, who illuminates our lives and brings us together into community. Amen. Amen. Today, we are celebrating the presentation of our Lord, also known as Candlemas. This lesser festival occurs on February 2nd, 40 days after the Nativity of our Lord, making this the official end of the Christmas season. For about another week, we remain firmly planted in the season after Epiphany, the season of light, where many of our scripture passages focus on God revealing God's self through Jesus, our Redeemer who brings salvation. Over time, the custom of candle lighting and candle blessing has been added to this celebration to serve as a symbol of Jesus Christ, revealed as light to all the world. And we will enact that custom at the end of this service, blessing any candles that you brought from home, and also blessing some electric candles we have here for you to take home if you wish. This celebration is called the Presentation of Our Lord as Mary and Joseph head to the temple as a faithful Jewish couple to fulfill the religious 
requirements and expectations of their time. Mary is expected to go to the temple to purify herself 40 days after giving birth to Jesus. The couple is also expected to present and dedicate Jesus as their firstborn son to God. In the beginning of this story from the Gospel of Luke, all is going according to plan. Mary and Joseph are doing business as usual. They go to the temple. They offer the sacrifice that is required. And finally, Jesus is presented. But then, the unexpected happens. As they are performing their required duties, they encounter a man named Simeon and a woman named Anna, and all are illuminated. This is a light bulb moment, an aha moment, a moment when God revealed God's self in a very intimate way within a newly gathered community of people brought together by the Holy Spirit. I experienced a light bulb moment such as this in 2012 during an encounter with a mother and her son. I was at the orphanage Hogar Miguel Magone in Guatemala coordinating a service trip that was designed to offer respite to the orphanage workers and staff. The director of the orphanage, Karen Rodas, had shared with me that one of their biggest struggles is to give vacation to staff. They were running a boys' orphanage with 11 staff for 55 boys, and the 55 boys were and still are divided into three groups, the peques, the medianos, and the grandes, with two caregivers for each group. One of the caregivers works a 24-hour shift, at which time the second caregiver relieves them and works a 24-hour shift. Imagine caring for a group of 15 to 20 boys all day and all night for 24 hours every other day as your job. Super tough. So vacation was very needed and also hard to provide. Karen asked if we could schedule volunteer groups over two weeks to give vacation to most of their staff, including those six caregivers, the laundry person, and the cooks. We decided we would aim to have 25 people each week to cover the 11 staff who would be taking vacation. During those two weeks, Karen and her husband, Estuardo, who had also not had a vacation in years, would travel to Pennsylvania to both build relationships with congregations and take some much needed respite time themselves. I arrived in Guatemala with some friends and a couple of my older children a few days early to plan menus and logistics, to buy food and supplies, to get ready for our two weeks. And then our volunteer crew arrived Staff began their vacations. Karen and Estuardo headed to the airport bound for PA. We were focused on business as usual. Meals, laundry, activity schedules, homework. It was on that very first day when Karen and Estuardo were literally up in the sky in an airplane somewhere between Guatemala and Pennsylvania that the loud bell at the front gate rang. I vividly remember. I was in a classroom working with the Medianos on their homework when someone came to the doorway and called me urgently to the gate. There I was confronted with a mother who was in tears. She was standing there embracing her son tightly as she sobbed. She told me that she was very sick. She had been battling cancer without medical treatment as she could not afford it. This mother looked at me right in the eye and said, take my son. I was sure I did not understand what she was saying, and so I asked what, and she repeated, take my son. I am sick, and I'm going to the hospital, and I probably will not be back. Please take my son. In broken Spanish, I frantically tried to explain to her that Karen and Estuardo were not at the orphanage, and I could not even call them because they were up in the air at that moment. And she said to me, I remember you. I know you. You've been helping our village for years. I trust you. Please, please take my son. This was a pivotal moment in my life. 
I saw the light. What was brought to that light in a fraction of the second was that my life was intimately connected to this mother. Have you ever shared this kind of intimate moment with a stranger where you left that encounter knowing a little bit more about yourself and about God and about faith? In our Gospel reading from Luke, the infant Jesus brought those who were not at all connected together into an intimate community. Mary, Joseph, Simeon, and Anna went from business as usual into an intimate space illuminated with Jesus. As Simeon embraced that baby in his aging arms, God's promise was fulfilled. As Anna saw the light, she shared that light, proclaiming the good news, giving praise and thanks to God. And Mary and Joseph, they marveled in amazement. I wonder what Mary and Joseph were thinking and feeling as they returned to Galilee after their encounter with Simeon and Anna in the temple. I wonder what light was shed onto their own understanding of who their child was and would be to others. We learn more about God through interactions and experiences with each other. That mother who dropped off her son at the orphanage with me, she did come back. She took her son back home with her, but now she had a solid support system and an extended community. We all were changed in that we had a very visceral awareness of how we were connected to each other in a way that we could no longer ignore. When the end of the two weeks came and I boarded the airplane back to Pennsylvania, I knew my life would never be the same. I knew more about who Jesus was and who I was in my newly connected community. Like Simeon and Anna, what I had seen and experienced could never be undone. And like Anna, I was inspired to proclaim how Christ was made known to me in that mother and her son. If you and I are honest with ourselves, we often come to this temple, to our spiritual home, expecting and enacting business as usual. We get logistics in order. Alb's on, microphone batteries checked, choir motet practiced, candles lit, bread and cup in place. We find our usual space. We might read the bulletin or chat with a neighbor. And at the same time, unexpected moments of potentiality to encounter the living light of Christ are present through our interactions with God and each other. Jesus is waiting to be revealed in a caring smile shared across the circle, to be made known in the full cord hanging in the end of a motet, to be received while kneeling down in humility, as the mystery of Christ fully present in the bread and cup is broken and shared. We gather as an intimate community in front of God and each other, and not just with those present with us on a particular day, but with those saints who have gone before us. We gather around the font and the table with Mary and Joseph, with Simeon and Anna, with loved ones past and present, and with those we do not know very well yet as we encounter the mystery of Christ as one body, one community throughout the ages. Eating from one bread and drinking from one cup embodies our unity in Christ. We who are individuals are also one body. In communion we are gathered, and in communion we are sent. We gather as Jesus' body is broken and shared with each of us, and we humbly receive Jesus' full presence into our broken bodies to grow in spiritual maturity, to strengthen our faith, and to be filled with God's wisdom and grace, just like the child Jesus from today's gospel story. We receive this gift of Jesus, trusting Christ's real presence in our sacrament, and we give ourselves away, as Christ did, offering our time, talents, and our very selves to the world as we are sent from this space. Just as the Holy Spirit guided Simeon, the Holy Spirit guides us, empowering us to recognize Jesus in ourselves and others, 
guiding us as witnesses to make Christ known. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome, the light of our collective lives. The invitation in this passage is to come before God just as you are. The challenge is to be in community with each other and with God, to be in the moment, to not miss a single opportunity to experience Jesus revealed as divine love, fully present with us in this space, noticing those light bulb moments, those aha moments that change us as we shine forth the light of Christ. During the rest of our time together today, I invite you to notice in song and ritual how Christ's light is flowing into you and those around you. Notice as we sing Simeon's words together as one of our communion songs, share joy across the circle singing this little light of mine. Marvel in amazement as Mary and Joseph did at the mystery of Jesus' word made flesh as we humbly receive Jesus' broken body into ours. Pause to think who is present with us as we gather around the table or as we dip our hands into the font, saints past, present, and future. And as we light candles, remember, you are God's beloved community gathered to be illuminated by the light of Christ in order to be sent so that Christ's light shines forth through you into all the world. May we, like Simeon, see God's promise fulfilled in Jesus. May we, like Mary and Joseph, marvel in amazement at who Jesus is in our lives. May we, like Anna, share the light that is Christ proclaiming the good news, giving thanks and praise to God. May we embrace this light of Christ and let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen.